Hey family, it's the Mobile Home Diva. And in today's video, I'm gonna share with you another step in the mobile home purchasing process as we experienced it, as my family experienced it. Please remember I'm not a professional. I'm sharing my experience, the way my husband and I went through this process so that you can have an idea of what to look for and have some knowledge going into the process. So before we get started, stop right here. If you're not a subscriber, you want to go ahead and do that. Go ahead, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know every time I upload another video. Now that you've gotten that out of the way, let's get to it. So before I get into this next part of the process, I do want to clear something up because I gave you an incorrect amount when it comes to the earnest money that we paid. Our realtor asked for $500 earnest money. We paid them $500. The builder, Clayton Holmes, asked for $1,500. I confirmed in an email that we actually gave them, my husband actually gave them $1,500 on his card and $1,000 cash. So $2,500 in earnest money was paid um, to secure the deal that we were going into. Now, you don't have to pay extra two things. You don't have to pay extra. If they say a thousand, give them a thousand, right? But remember, whatever money that you put toward uh, as earnest money, this goes toward your down payment. So originally, our down payment was like a little over eleven thousand. But the day we closed, because of the money that we had put down in earnest money, um, we only had to pay a little over seven thousand. So it's up to you. Pay what they ask for, or if you have extra, you can certainly do that too. That's up to you and your household. So now, we talked about inspections and different things that had to happen. Uh, as soon as we entered into the contract, uh, they had to have an inspection of the pro property and different things like that. I talked about that in the last video. There are three videos before this one that lead you up to this point. So if you have not watched those videos, you want to stop right here, click the I card above, go ahead and watch those three videos, and then you want to watch this one, okay? So now you've had your inspection, your, the mobile home dealer has contacted the city or county that you're moving to. They understand what it's going to take to get you in that home. And by that, I mean there are different laws and regulations for wherever you are moving to. For where we move, you had to have a driveway. Had to have block or brick underpinning. There's certain requirements for being able to get you into that mobile home on the land that you're purchasing. That's a part of the process leading up to closing. So by now, all of that stuff is done. All of that preliminary stuff is done. And this is the next step. So the next step for us was we got a call from Cascade Loans, who is the financial institution that funded our loan. And they needed some things, not only from us, they needed things from the seller, the builder, which was Clayton Homes for us. It could be Freedom Homes. It could be... Uh, uh, whoever the manufacturer of your dealer, whoever you purchase your home from, that's going to be called the builder in your paperwork. And they needed items from, for us. From us, they needed a copy of both of our, because my husband and I are both on the loan. If it's just you, or if it's you and your mom, you and your brother, whoever, whoever's on the loan has to provide a copy of their driver's license. They have to provide, um, do an income verification whether you work, um, you're on disability and social security, um, you don't have to work, you have to provide where your income comes from, or if, um, whatever your situation, if you work for yourself, you have to provide an income verification. What that looks like for you may be different for me. For me, I provided a copy of my husband and my W-2, okay? For you, depends on your situation, but you have to verify your income and the financial institution that funds your loan will tell you what is required in order to do that. 
Another thing that we had to provide was um, uh, the person that we rented from. Where we had lived in the last five years, we had to provide um, a name and number for them to contact to verify if we were a good renter. You know, we had, they had to verify where we live. I forget where you call it. But they had to verify where we live. So they called our landlord and verified um, our rental history. They um, looked at our W-2s to verify our job history. And then we also had to verify where the money was coming from for our down payment. Now, every situation is different. My husband um, had left his job after eight or so years in order to work for himself. He was driving for Uber. And so the money that he took out of that 401k, we had in cash here. He had to provide a clipping of the bank statement where that money from 401k was deposited into his account because it proved where he got that money from. I went into my 401k to borrow the other half and I had to provide a clipping of my bank statement of that money that was deposited into my account. Okay. It might be different for you. Maybe your mom gave you the down payment money. You got to either provide a picture of the check or a clipping of it deposited into your account. Whatever the financial institution deems as, um, whatever they'll accept, they'll let you know, but you do have to show where the money came from. You can't slap $10,000 cash on the counter. They won't accept that. You have to provide where the money came from. So that was that. Driver's license, um, I don't remember anything else outside of driver's license as far as what we had to show uh, per, for personal. I think driver's license was enough. It also had the address of the home that we were living in um, for the last four years. Um, so that verified that we actually did live there. They called our landlord and verified that. And... Um, Yeah, work history. We verified work history uh, via W-2. There also were some items that the builder and the seller had to provide. The builder had a, to provide a copy of the contract that was signed. Now, when we went to confirm what house we were purchasing and um, verify that we had put down earnest money on the land, we uh, signed a contract. It was a preliminary contract just confirming that we were going to move forward with the deal. Um, Clayton Holmes had to provide a copy of that contract. And um, the contract just, it wasn't binding. It, it, nothing is binding until you actually close on the house. The contract was a preliminary contract. And it, it was in essentially, I agreed to all of these items that were listed. And it had a breakdown of... If I can find it, I'll put it on the screen. It had a breakdown of everything that was going to be included in our deal. Um, and I can't remember exactly what it looks like, but I believe I have a copy of it and I'll put it here on the screen. So they provided a copy of that contract. They also provided to Cascade the receipt for the $1,500 earnest money that we gave them. They provided a copy, and that's necessary because... Cascade needs to know how much money has been put towards the down payment. They provided a copy of the home invoice and quote, and also the order confirmation of the home. Now, um, the order confirmation for us was just preliminary because the home was on the lot. But if they had actually ordered the home from um, the warehouse where they make them, then they would have had to provide it um, a copy of all the details of that. Um, they provided a copy of the floor plan. They completed sign and date the authorization of services, meaning all of the items that they were going to take care of, of, of and set up in delivery. And they had to provide an insurance quote for the property. So all of those were the builder's responsibility. 
Cascade had to take care of the title work, including survey approval. So they took care of that even before we started going through this needs list. They provided a copy of the land valuation. Um, and also, um, at this time, they were waiting on the verification of rent. So they had to provide all of those things for the... I hope I'm not boring you with all these details, but these are all of the things that we were waiting on in order for our, our loan to close. So again, you know, just to reiterate, they had to verify our job history, our income, our rental history, um, and also where the down payment was coming from, as well as get our copy of our driver's license. All of the things that they had to take care of, we know because they sent us an email, uh, sometimes weekly, sometimes every two weeks. It just depended on where we are were in the process. We initially started the whole process the very end of January, like January 31st. And as you can see here on the screen, we got a number of emails with updates. Uh, looks like weekly, there was a time period where it was every two weeks. Um, but we got a, a copy of that. And then once everything was complete, we got a copy of the final CD, as you can see from here on the screen. And it's a breakdown of every single item that we that was we paid for or that was included in our loan. Once we closed, we closed on April 1st and on April 4th, we got our last email verifying that the loan had been funded and we were moving on to construction. So all of the things that I listed here were important in order for you or are important in order for you to move forward with the closing. It's just a part of the process. And if you're going through this process or you're thinking about this process, be aware that all of these things have to happen and have to take place in order for you to get the closing. Uh, I, as you can see, we started the process January, right around January. It was January 31st when we got the first email. The reason that all of the things that I listed are not in that January 31st email is because they initially gave us a call. And all of the items that she was explaining to me that she needed, I already had prepared because I had done some research as to what we were going to need. I had a copy of our W-2s already saved on my computer. I had my driver's license there. My husband wasn't home. I had a lot of stuff already ready for her. So as she was asking for it, I was emailing it to her. At the end of the conversation, the only thing that she needed was a copy of my husband's driver's license. And that's why his um, provide a copy of Walter's driver's license was listed here because I didn't have it to send to her. So she was very impressed that I was ready to go. If you are in the process, start gathering that stuff. You don't want to extend the time that it takes to close because you have um, issues coming up with all of the paperwork that you need. So go ahead and start gathering that stuff. Um, and um, you'll be prepared when your lender needs those that information. You'll already have it or be prepared to provide it for them. In the next video, we're going to talk about the reason that it took two months for us to close. As you can see, the first email that I showed you in this clipping was January 31st, but we didn't close until April 1st. So it took about two months. There was a bump in the road and it was the fault of the seller not disclosing all of the information that he should have disclosed. And I'm going to share that with you in the next video. So get ready. It's a juicy one. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that everything I said makes sense and I didn't ramble too much. I hope that um, this has been helpful to you. Um, if you have any questions, make sure you put them down in the comment box. Again, we're not professionals. It's just our experience as we remember it. Okay, so I hope it helps and you have a good rest of your day. Talk to you soon.